let's talk about uh, the pluggable backends of Triton. Uh, you know that we support uh, PostgreSQL, uh, SQLite, and also uh, MySQL, even though the, uh, thank you, even though the, um, how do you say that? The, the tests are not run currently against MySQL because it takes too long and uh, MySQL is not really reli reliable. So we kind of skip this backend, but anyhow, it's there and uh, it, it should work. But uh, we had a customer that had an issue where they wanted to use PostGIS, so PostGIS is the uh, geographic uh, extension to uh, PostgreSQL to store uh, into PostGRES database, the uh, data structure that are uh, points, uh, straight lines, and also polygons and so on, which are related to uh, geographic data. So they have created this application, which is called, uh, it's a French company, so it's named Seam, like uh, the top of the trees. And uh, Seam is an application that is used for mapping stuff on, uh, on forest, in fact. They identify sensitive zone on this forest. They don't use Triton to do that. They, they, they use the, they go there, they, they take their measurements. And then afterwards, they use a specific software to, to write those uh, specific uh, information. They track data on the mapped zone. So they put on some mapped zone. Yeah, there you have a specific tree, which is very special and you don't want to cut it because it's an old tree and so on. And it's an application that is used by very big uh, French companies. Uh, the, as, as they say, it's key accounts. The, it's Vinci and GRDF. I don't know, Vinci is a company that does, uh, I don't know exactly, it's, it's for Vinci. With, what kind of company is Vinci? buildings and stuff like that. And GRDF, it's electricity and so on. Yes? Okay. And, and gas, of course. Okay. Seam uh, is, uses, is using PostGIS. In fact, they use it. They use it. Uh, they use it to create their columns into the, the PostGRES uh, database. It's uh, quasi they're only used. So uh, they use it like uh, <laughs> I don't want to write my own SQL queries. But uh, yeah, why not? But you, you will see that we can go further now. And Seam uh, was using Triton version 2.8. So as you can see, there are people that are way, way, way still happy with late. <laughs> and still happy with 2.8. And uh, indeed, uh, they, but now they want to migrate. And they had a custom uh, module made by us for, uh, to use PostGIS. But this module was obviously not compatible anymore with Triton. So we were tasked to create uh, PostGIS backend. But uh, we didn't want to include PostGIS as a backend for Triton because uh, it's not the core business of Triton. <coughs> so the requirements. The backends should integrate quite easily in Triton. So ideally, we should put just database, URI, uh, PostGIS, and so on. And you're free, it works. The backend will not be official, so it will not be included. It should be a kind of a side project with maybe the idea that one day MySQL will be moved also. It's to be discussed. 
the Triton D test must be executed against the backend so that we are sure that uh, Triton still works with this backend. It's important because obviously <laughs> you want to be sure that your Triton is still working. So uh, that was the, the goals. What uh, was needed to change in Triton to reach this goal? Because afterwards, it was quite easy. There were some trivial stuff. Uh, for example, we had uh, this assertion in uh, PostgreSQL, which obviously when you, when you change the scheme of the URI, it will not work anymore. And if you remember, we wanted to have in the URI the scheme PostGIS to know that we are using a different backend. And since PostGIS is just an extension of PostGIS, we were thinking about just subclassing the, uh, the code of the PostGIS backend. And this kind of assertion had to be removed. It's not difficult. Uh, <coughs> we also take this opportunity to change the way we specify the SQL types in Triton. Uh, I will go further on that in later slides. But that's just the points that we change. Then uh, to run the test, we needed also to run the specific test of the, uh, of the backend because you want to be sure that Triton test works, but you want also to be sure that some of your, uh, of your uh, backend test works also. So they have to run afterwards. So we needed a way to declare new tests into the Triton test. So let's go. The abstract SQL types. What is the issue? Uh, when you, yeah, it's long. When you create a geometric colon in PostGIS, you use a function which is add geometric colon. Oh, simple. And it will create your colon. Bam. OK. Your, you have your colon. It's easy. But the SQL type function that is used in Triton to know exactly what is the type of the function and so on, uh, of the colon, was kind of a leaky abstraction because it was defined it and you had a if for Postgres, sometimes a if for MySQL and a if for, uh, for, for SQLite. And so adding a new backend, meaning that we have to add a if everywhere or something like that. That's the kind of code smell that you can say this is not good. It should be delegated to the backend to say, uh, okay, you want a date time, I use this way of specifying a, a date time. So that's what we do by uh, <coughs> creating the abstract SQL types. Uh, so now, each Triton uh, model field, so each field in Triton, define its abstract SQL type. So a type, of course, it looks like the standard SQL types, but uh, uh, I can add point, I can add anything, and it will be delegated to the backend to transform, for example, a car into a var car. That's easy, but uh, it's the kind of change in the architecture that makes the stuff more easily uh, pluggable. Uh, this type, uh, as I said, is used when we communicate with the, with the backend. And we say, I want to create a car. The backend knows that the car is a var car. And so he creates, he just creates the column var car. And the backend, so as I said already two times, <laughs> knows how to map 
this type to the way the backend understand the, the SQL types. Now, the second point is the tests with the entry points. So I will explain first the issue. <coughs> so of course we needed to ensure that Triton still works. So when you test your backend, you have to call the Triton D tests. We need it, of course, to test the new features uh, so that uh, when you create, uh, for example, a colon of type uh, point, you will really have a point. <laughs> Having a point. And you need to register uh, also sometimes new model into the test modules that Triton uses to, to make this test to um, to, to create new models that will be used when you insert a new point, when you test if you, what you received is correctly uh, transformed and, uh, to another point, to uh, another object, and so on. So this needed to be plugged into the way the Triton creates the test database and use it. So, for that, we will use Python entry points. Python entry points are uh, not your usual Python feature. The documentation is not really friendly. Usually, I think that the Python documentation is quite well written and you can get into the, the feature easily. For the entry points, it's related to packaging and packaging in, Triton, in Python sorry, is a mess. Every, there, there are uh, new specifications popping up almost every year. For, you all know the setup.py, but there is also setup.cfg. There is no pip.env, which creates pip.env file, I think. So uh, although it's seems it gets slowly towards pip off like the standard in Python. It's, also, it's a kind of a mess and very difficult to, 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 to get into it. And the entry points were created at the time they were trying to standardize everything. And it was a big, big, big documentation with a lot of use case in mind. And, so the documentation is really hard to get into it, but anyway. And the uh, Python feature is related to setup tools. As I said, it's the stuff from packaging which are hard to, to grasp. But they are useful because they advertise Python objects for use by other stuff. Uh, and, uh, I, I saw a small examples that defined different kind of snakes. And so when you call your command uh, snake, they, they create a small command snake, and you can have a new uh, a snake like the Python snake, then you can have a snake that is a boa, then you can create a new plugin that will add a new kind of snake and so on. It's really an example that shows the, the power behind the entry points, the, this power to define a plugin infrastructure, in fact. You can define, okay, there you will have uh, a lot of stuff, modules, for example, in, in Triton, we use that for modules, and you can install, with pip install, I don't know, the module of someone found on the internet, maybe a zigzag module that is in pip, uh, on PyPy, and when you use that, it will use the entry points to plug the new zigzag module that you have found into the uh, list of modules that Triton knows about. As I said, <laughs> it's already used by uh, Triton for modules and also for backends. But I'm not sure at that time it was working. Uh, and it's defined into setup files, setup.py files. 
or setup.cfg or whatever, as long as you have uh, setup tools. So uh, the anatomy of an entry point, it's not uh, very difficult. An entry point is in fact defined into a distribution. The, as I said, there's a lot of abstraction in this stuff about packaging. So a distribution is, let's say the Triton modules is just a distribution of all the Triton modules in the world. And so when you define an entry point, you have to say, okay, I belong to the distribution of the Triton modules. For the backends, we will say, I belong to the distribution of the Triton backends. And you can uh, define it like that. In your setup.py, you will have setup, entry points, distribution, then the name of the entry points. So for example, you have Triton backends. The name will be PostGIS or something like that. Then some modules, some attribute, and an extra, but I will not go into detail about those. Uh, <coughs> and the distribution allows to find entry points by what they are related to. Uh, okay, I think I talk about that in the second slide. The interesting thing is the name which is required, is the name of the, your object into the distribution. Some module which is also required it's a Python path. So, for example, you have Triton D dot model dot fields, or uh, I don't know, you could have uh, any path you can imagine when you type an import, in fact. And some attribute, which is optional, because you might want to point to a specific object into the module you are pointing to. And to loop over all those uh, objects in the distribution, uh, the setup tools provide this command, which is iter, of, of iter entry points with the name of the distribution, which allows you to get all those objects that are pointed by some.modules. Now, we need to add uh, our new test into the entry points. So we introduced a new distribution, which is tritond.tests. They define the base location where the test can be found. So it defines the, um, the path where you will find all the test underscore a name dot pi file that we use to, to test Triton. And it will loop over all those files and include them into, uh, into the, 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 the Triton test. Also, what, does, what we are using also this distribution for is that uh, the entry point have, uh, allows to call the register function from the specific object we are pointing to. If there is a register function, it will be used to, uh, to be called. It will be called, and so you can use it to register your new module for the testing and so on. So when you type into your new backend that you've defined, uh, Python setup.py test, everything goes like planet. You test your backend, you test the Triton D back test because it's the way we are making the bridge, and it's run. So let's get to the real PostGIS backend. Uh, in fact, that's the, that was the easy part because PostGIS is just a, a small layer on top of Postgres. So what we needed is uh, to create new fields. It, 
it was just defining a few classes. Uh, new database interface to PostGIS. It was just inheriting from the PostGIS database objects that we already have with some small tweaks. We needed a specific table handler just to create the geographic columns because as we have seen, geographic columns are created by calling a specific functions and not by uh, adding column. Although in Postgres you can do that, but it's not generic. So for the geographic fields, <coughs> We define it the SQL types to return the correct SQL types, abstract SQL types that we wanted. So uh, let's say the point. We want a point in a specific. Uh, I, it's a bit complicated, but in Postgres, in, in a geographic information system, you have uh, different kind of representing the, the information. You know, you have the Mercator space and you have the, the Mercator um, projection the, and also all kinds of different projection. And this allows you to specify which projection you can use. Although, in fact, for SIEM, they don't use uh, a, uh, a specific projection. They just use the projection that everyone uses, which is uh, a number, in fact. Uh, I don't remember the name. Then we define it on those fields, the SQL format function, which allows to take the data, which is a blob of binary data, and transform it into a GeoJSON object. GeoJSON is kind of a standard. It's not yet a standard, but as far as I have seen, almost everybody is using it, which basically says this is a point, this is the latitude, not exactly latitude, but this is its x axis value and its y axis value, and this is the projection we are using. So, and it, this is in JSON format. And we use, uh, we override also convert domain to use specific Python SQL functions for geographic data. So, in fact, in, uh, <coughs> in the backend, I implemented only a functions to verify that two points are equals, just to test that it was working. And, <coughs> of course, once we have defined it all, thus, all this into uh, uh, a specific class, I made a lot of subclasses of this class for each geographic types they are using. It was just a matter of creating the class and changing the abstract types. For the database object, in fact, there was only one change, if I remember correctly. It's the getConnectionObject uh, method which is uh, overridden to uh, register the new, new types for uh, the automatic typecasting. Because what Postgres does, it, it sends you the, the data in binary form, and then uh, you do whatever you want with it. So we had to plug specific uh, marshallers to transform this data into GeoJSON. And we do that on the get connect on the connections because we need to have the object ID of the types into the database. This is a, a limitation, not really a limitation, but a, a feature of the PsychoPG uh, connections. Oh, it's the other way around. Okay. And the create method of uh, the, da the database object is <coughs> also overridden because we use it in the test and uh, it's in fact when you on, on PostgreSQL when you want to use PostGIS you have to enter one command which is create extension PostGIS 
And if you don't do that, the database will not be a PostGIS database, and you cannot call the add geometry column function. So this is why it's needed. It's because when you launch the test, this function is called, and so we need to do it. Up, page down. Okay. So the table handler, uh, it was also uh, changed to, uh, according the abstract type, if it's a car or an integer or, uh, I don't know, uh, a dictionary object, we don't really care. We pass the problem to our parent class, and so we call super, and it will create a column as Triton does already. And if we are not in the case of uh, standard SQL uh, columns, we make the SQL query to call at geometry colon, and voila, it's done. So, questions? I know this is abstract, but anyway. <laughs> yes, the test the test works. So, yes, you can go to the mic. Um, with these uh, pluggable backends, it will be more easy to uh, create custom backends. Yes, that's the the goal of the uh, of the of the whole refactoring that we've done. It's to make uh, easier to create new backends and test them because uh, it was a bit more diffic difficult to test. And also, people can now have backends in PyPy, and Triton doesn't rely on those. We are not slowed by a new backend, and there is a backend on, the, uh, on PyPy. For, for this backend, I think we will try to have the same numbering as with Triton, so people know that it's compatible, like you had with Kalenis, Kalensis, I don't remember. Um, so we will probably start with uh, the version 4.8 or 4.6, because we can release it right now if we want. But if someone wants to create, for example, an Oracle backend, why not? And it could use this new infrastructure that we have made to make tests and so on. Or, uh, yes? Um, so, uh, did, do I understand correctly? Uh, now we have a kind of uh, base uh, definition for standard SQL, and every backend can uh, take it and modify it uh, like it's needed for a special backend. Uh, yes, we. In fact, we already had that because uh, when you implement a backend, there's not very much to do. Uh, we have already uh, uh, specifications for Postgres, SQLite, so and of course MySQL. <coughs> but uh, yeah, with the change, we now have an abstraction over that, so that we say Triton relies on this field to be an integer. And then it's up to the database, so the backend, to understand how it stores an integer and how it uses an integer to the, the way it sees an integer, it has to be transformed to be an integer for 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 Triton. Yes, but uh, now we have uh, the problem, uh, we, we need a base uh, which is defined. We, we had a base uh, which was defined by uh, having a common, common uh, yes. structure for all the databases we, we already have. Mm -hmm. But now we need uh, another base which is defined uh, by something uh, more abstracted because yes. uh, we don't want to hurt uh, people who write a new backend uh, if we put things in the, the base which is are not usable in the backend. Yes, yes, it's in the... If you want to create a new, uh, a new abstraction, you can, as I did for, for new geographic types. And then we expect an integer to be an integer. We expect a car to be a car. It's, 
it's Python objects. We say this is the kind of job objects we want, and then it's up to the backend to handle it. We transfer the responsibility to someone else, if you want. Someone that is us, but... No more questions? Okay.